Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And good evening. Praise the Lord on this Tuesday. Amen. Um, and we're here for our Bible study. And we praise God for the opportunity. Amen. To be here again and to be uh, in the word of God. Amen. And to be with the Lord. Amen. On this Tuesday night. Um, and we are, as always, um, looking forward to just having God speak to us in a way in which we need it. Amen. Amen. You know, again, the preachers always say, is there a word from the Lord? And, you know, God's always speaking. Amen. We don't always hear him Amen. for various reasons. But isn't it a blessing to know that God is always speaking? Which means that the situations and circumstances that we may be facing at any given time, God is speaking to those things. And um, he's giving us the answers that we need. And again, sometimes we're not in position to hear what he is saying. But, um, you know, we have to trust by faith that he is speaking. And God is going to speak tonight. I believe that. Amen. Amen. And I believe that he's going to help us and he's going to continue to guide us along in this journey of faith. Amen. That's one of the things after a while when you've been saved and you, you know, you gave your life to the Lord, you're in the church, you're following God, you realize something. This is not about any particular destination that you may end up at. You know what I mean? Because everything's temporary anyway, mm -hmm. right? And we know that wherever you arrive, um, it may be a couple of years, if that long, you may be on to something else. You know, you got the job, but a couple of years, you got another one. Mm -hmm. You got this house, but in a few years, you know, maybe you're in another one. Mm -hmm. You live in this state, but you could be moving on, you know, um, uh, in a few years. Uh, and so it's not the destination. Amen. It's the journey. Amen. Right? It's the journey that we need to be focused on. Because uh, God's just going to continue to lead us. And we're going to end up certain places and be there for a certain period of time. But that journey is going to last until Jesus comes or until God takes us home. Amen. So Amen. we need to focus on the journey. The destination will kind of take care of itself. But we want to make sure that we have a good journey with the Lord. And so I believe that God's going to help us on our journey tonight uh, by continuing to speak to us and encourage us to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Amen. That's how you walk. You know? Mm -hmm. Amen. And some of us may walk like you know, the babies that start to take their first step. Yeah. You know what's wonderful about babies taking their first step? How happy and excited they are <laughs> yeah. when they do it. Yeah. I mean, that joy that they have, like they they realize I'm doing something. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. You know, and they just have that joy. And then when they fall down, they even, you know, they fall back, they you know, they still like, oh man, I did yeah, something. To get that yeah, isn't that something? That's why, you know, you, you if you think about how Jesus said that we have to have, you know, childlike faith, the faith like yeah. a child. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of thing. As you said, when they fall, they're ready to get back up again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And when they fall, they don't fall, you know, with their face made up. It's like they even enjoyed the fall right. because they were they knew they were walking. Yes. Amen. And they're walking kind of unsteady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're walking. Walking like a drunken sailor. <laughs> <laughs> but but they were moving. Yeah. They were. Amen. And sometimes we have to be satisfied with that. That maybe the way we're walking is maybe it's not pretty and maybe it's not smooth. Mm -hmm. But keep walking. Right? Small steps. Yeah. Keep walking. Amen. You know what they call them baby steps. <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. So we praise God for the journey. Amen. Amen. 
but tonight we are going to be talking about small steps and small things and 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 you know the smallness could be in so many areas of our lives but we do live in a world where in, the, in, in our society where they focus on bigger being better yes. you know what i mean like it's all it's a numbers game bigger is better um you know bigger house bigger car bigger job you know um you know bigger tv set bigger ministry bigger ministry mm-hmm. you know bigger following on social media right it's always about the numbers and it's like bigger 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 crowd, right? Yeah. Some people are fixated on crowd size. They want their crowds to be bigger. Yeah. Just saying. Um, but yeah, but this this sense of, of bigger, 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 bigger and, and, and yet, you know, uh, you know, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Mm-hmm. And so we need to be careful not to buy into that necessarily because we can then begin to get dissatisfied if what we have isn't, or we don't think it's big enough. Amen. Exactly. Right. Um, and so we want God wants to talk to us about that tonight. So we're going to um, go to the book of Zechariah. We're going to be one verse there, and we'll probably, you know, provide some more context um, as, as God moves us along. But we're in Zechariah chapter four. So we're going to go there. We're going to read one verse of scripture in chapter 10. And um, and then we'll go from there. It says, uh, for who has despised the day of small things? But they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those set. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Amen. Amen. I think the um, New Living Translation says, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. So God's saying, do not despise the small things. Do not Amen. despise the small beginnings because the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Amen. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Father, we bless your Amen. name and we thank you, Lord. Uh, for this Tuesday evening. We pray now, God, that you will come and occupy the place, that you will speak to our hearts and minds, and God, that you will pull down strongholds, destroy yokes, and loose bands of oppression, and set us free. And Father God, let your word flow freely, and Father God, build us up in our faith. And Father, we thank you, O God, because we believe that it is done, and we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, Sister, Sister Penix. Penix. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God for Sister Penix. Yeah. Amen. So we're we're in Zechariah chapter four, verse number ten, and talking about here, and this is a scripture that we we've heard many times, right? Do not despise the day of you know the small beginnings, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it says the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Um, but going back to what we were saying. It is something that in this society that small many times is equated with insignificant, yeah. minor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, something that's not worthy of respect. Small. Yes. Mm-hmm. Look at this small car you got. Where are you going with this small car? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. you know. And she says, small ministry, small business, you know, you know, um, you know, small, as if small, again, is something that is to be taken for granted. But yet in Zechariah chapter four, this was about the rebuilding of the temple. And, you know, in, in Ezra, it talks about the temple being rebuilt. And we talked about this a few months back on Sunday morning, on one Sunday morning, mm-hmm. for the rebuilding of the temple. And it was Zechariah and Haggai that encouraged the people because they started to build and then they stopped building. Yes. And then it was Zechariah and Haggai who encouraged the people to resume the building. And here, you know, uh, Zerubbabel, who was in charge of the building, 
uh, was given some encouragement uh, because the temple, when the temple was rebuilt, some of the older Jews who knew of the former temple and how big and how glorious it was were crying tears of sadness mm -hmm. because this rebuilt temple, this, this newer version of the temple was smaller than that previous one. Yes. And it was funny that, that those who didn't see that previous one were rejoicing that the temple was rebuilt. So there was a, a, a there was a loud noise that was going up. Some of it was gladness, some of it was sadness. Mm -hmm. And it was the older ones who were like sad and like, look at this temple. It's not as big, it's not as glorious as before. And that's why God said, don't despise these small beginnings. Mm -hmm. For the Lord rejoiced to see the work begin. But isn't that you know, sort of typical of like how sometimes we think of things, right? Mm -hmm. We want a big blessing from the Lord. But yet there are so many smaller blessings mm -hmm. in our life. But man, you know, if you wait on that big one that hasn't come, then somehow we think we can, we're justified in walking around with a frown on our face. <laughs> what is it about big things that we think make them so much better is it just like social conditioning that we have come to this place of believing that bigger is better or you know what i mean like why is it you know and i think we're all guilty of it from, in various ways why is it that we always for example if someone says i'm getting another house more than likely what they're going to say it's going to be bigger than my other one why yeah i think we're just so conditioned to think that because things are bigger, they're mm -hmm. automatically better. Yeah. You know, that, that's the way, because that's the way the world presents things. Because if it's bigger, it's got to be better. Mm -hmm. But just because something is bigger doesn't mean that it's better. I mean, if something is smaller, it could be better for you. <laughs> yeah. Because it's depending on who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you say you're a single person, you are a widow, you don't need a big, <laughs> a big house, mm. you know? Right. Because it may right. be too much for you to take care of. Mm -hmm. A big old yard, a big old house with six, seven bedrooms. Well, you need all that right. space for mm -hmm. it's only you. You got to yeah. tend to it. Yeah. So if you have, a, if you have something small, yeah, it's perfect for you. So I think we're just so conditioned to think that because it's bigger, it must be better, but that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. And I think that because we tend to think, you know, we, we take the smaller blessings of God for granted because we think that we're supposed to have them. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is that when things are bigger, whether it's a crowd size or a building size, it's all based on numbers, right? If it's a building, it's more square feet. But those are numbers. You know it's more because it's 3,000 right. yeah. versus mm -hmm. four or 5,000. You say, well, the 5,000 is bigger. The crowd, the same way, is based on numbers. And we, and we know that numbers, the more, you know, the higher you go, that's more. And typically we think more is better. Right. Right? You better have more. But you know what, what, what's also something, it's like you said, more or bigger is not always better. But here's the other thing as, as, as um, children of God. Just because something is bigger doesn't mean God is in it. And just because something is smaller doesn't mean God is not in it. And that's where we really have to be careful. Because you can see someone who has, you know, this huge ministry, for example, thousands of people in it. And it doesn't mean God is favoring that particular ministry. I mean, he could be frowning upon that ministry. Exactly. I know this past summer, there were a number of mega churches where pastors were exposed yeah. as doing things in their congregations that led to them resigning or being fired or you know dismissed or discharged by their church. 
I mean, these well-known pastors, huge, you know, what would be called mega churches. Mm -hmm. Well, it was mega, it was bigger, but look at what happened. And, and, and you know, and look, judgment begins in the, in the household of faith, right? And so God knew what was going on in those ministries and perhaps even in his mercy was giving you know certain people opportunity to repent or to do certain things and you know then it gets to a point where now it's a public shame and you know, expulsion and all the rest of that but right i mean oh the ministry is so big but look what's going on right right, right? and you can have something that's smaller and God can be in that. I mean, just think about how God wasn't in the in, in the earthquake, he wasn't in the wind, and he wasn't in the fire. So the big things, the loud things, the shiny things, the, the things that grab attention, God's not, he may not be in that. But after all that stuff, the still small voice. Right. Still and small. Right. <laughs> right. So we know God is not always in the flashy, the big, the bigger, the bolder. And he's in the small. So we as Christians especially need to be careful of thinking that just because what someone is doing is bigger than what someone else is doing, that God's with the big work, but he's not with the small work. Right. I believe that God likes to show himself in the small work because I think he can be seen more mm -hmm. in the small work. Yeah. You know, where things are not don't seem so elaborate and don't seem so you know, fancy. Mm -hmm. Just think about Jesus, where he was born. In the yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it was nothing elaborate or fancy. No. The thing about that, it was a mess. I think that God likes to Bonified. be seen in the mess. Yeah. That's where he can be more glorified, more seen. Mm -hmm. That's where his, his goodness, his glory can be revealed more often yeah. in places like that, in the small places. Where if, you, if you have these big and glorious Places like this, more than likely, God is going to be hidden in all that because people are going to be seen more than God is. Yeah, or numbers yeah. are going to be seen more than God is. Yeah. So you can't really, and I'm not saying that He won't be seen, right? Right. But you That's can't right. rely on the big, right, all the time. Yeah. There's something to be said about the small things we discussed. Like, do not despise. Do not despise the small. Right, the small beginnings and the day of the small. But as you said, I mean, you know. But I mean, if it's big, doesn't necessarily mean God's not in that either. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, because you were saying, it could still be right. Right, mm -hmm. but you need to be careful. Careful, because sometimes you know our human pride. Can get caught up in well mine is bigger than yours yeah. kind of a thing and so we need to be careful about that um but doesn't mean that just because it's big it's bad that's not saying it either right. but just because it's big doesn't mean it's better either i think that's really what god is saying and in particular to those who are at the beginning of something and it may not seem like much um or you you know you're, you're doing your work in obscurity yeah and you may think, well, what's the use? Mm -hmm. But continue to be faithful in that because God honors that, right? He says, you know, if you're faithful in least, you'll be faithful in much. God looks at how we handle small stuff yeah. before he gives us big stuff, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Yeah. It's the same thing. I'm looking at what you're doing with small stuff. So, you know. What are you doing with your small apartment if you have a small apartment or your small, you know, ministry or your small business? What are you doing with that? What are you doing with your small amount of money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because God's looking how you handle the small stuff right. to see, OK, are you ready for the bigger responsibility of more stuff, more, you know. And so, yeah. You know, we have to know that if the world is putting an emphasis on something, that's not how the kingdom is doing it. <laughs> right? right? Keep that in mind. <laughs> if the world is saying bigger is better, you know the kingdom is not working that way. That's right. 
right? Jesus said the first will be last, last will be first. It turns the world upside. It doesn't. It turns the world upside down, but the kingdom is right side up. <laughs> but you know, you think about um, First Corinthians, um, and I'll just read this here. First Corinthians one verse twenty eight. Mm-hmm. It talks about God. Well, let me go to verse twenty seven. It says that God has chosen the foolish things of the world yeah. to confound the wise. And he's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world, things that are considered worthless or insignificant, Mm -hmm. and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, Mm -hmm. that no flesh should glory in his presence. It goes back to what you're saying, God wanting to be seen, Mm -hmm. because if anybody's going to be glorified, it's going to be God. And so God will look at these small things. He'll look at the, he'll use the foolish things, the weak things, the base things, the despised things to pull down the mighty and all these other elaborate things so that he gets glory in what a lot of people are going, oh, that's nothing. Right. Right. He just brush it away. Mm -hmm. God wants to be seen in that. Yeah. In in the, in the messy things and mm-hmm. the brokenness. Yeah. God wants to be seen in it. Mm-hmm. You think about you think about Jesus feeding five thousand people oh, yeah. with two fish and five loaves of bread. Now if if you know that's not counting women and children. But if if on that mountainside there's a caterer right. mm-hmm. and <laughs> and he had the barbecue pit going. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? But my point is, if provision was there to feed all those people, we wouldn't talk about that. Right. The reason why we talk about that story is because 5,000, not counting women and children, were fed with two fish and five loaves of bread with a small lunch. That's right. If everybody had, you know, if it was like half the people had lunch and all they did was share with their neighbor. Right. That's right. That wouldn't have been nothing to talk about. But it was because it was so small, so meager. And when you get right down to it, when you look at the feeding of the 5,000, not only was it bread, but we've talked about this before. It was barley bread. Right. Right? It was barley, which was poor man's oh, man. bread. Oh, man. It wasn't wheat. It was barley. So not only was it just five loaves, but it was five of the most inferior bread of the day. Okay. That's what makes that special, right? Yeah. Because God's able to use that, a small amount of inferior quality, and do something great. And that's the encouragement he's given us. And that is because some of us feel that we're small. Mm -hmm. We're inferior. We're not as good as the next one. We're not as good as that one. But you need to be encouraged today because God loves using the small and inferior. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the broken and the tainted and the unwanted. And that's what God will use. Amen. The small, mm-hmm. the one that's hidden in the corner, yeah, that's unseen. <laughs> yeah, yes. We were, you know, one of the things we looked at was the parable of the yeast. Mm-hmm. Yeast. It's only one verse. Whether you look in Luke or uh, mm-hmm. in, in Matthew, when Jesus said, "The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman yeah. uses in making bread." Just a little yeast in three measures of flour permeates the whole loaf. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, this is how the kingdom of heaven is. Now, I know Paul used yeast to say, he was talking about sin and evil, right? Mm-hmm. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Right. But here, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Mm-hmm. That, you know, you put the, and yeast is like, and you turn, to your point, you can't see it. It's invisible. It's small. Mm-hmm. And especially when you put it in, you know, some flour, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it disappears, mm-hmm. but the effect of it right. is clearly seen. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like that, that God's kingdom is like that, imperceptible, 
and it grows from the inside out because the yeast is inside. Yes. It's yes. inside the flower yes. and it makes, you know, you can see the impact externally. And God is saying to people, yeah, you would like to your point, you may be invisible, but that's but the kingdom of God is like that. Yeah. I take things that are invisible that people can't see. And yeah. next thing you know, it's growing and people go, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so if you feel invisible, mm -hmm. I don't know how many people have ever felt invisible. You felt overlooked, felt forgotten. Yeah. God could be working on you. Yeah. I think God takes pride in doing things through people like that. They're no doubt. Small, mm -hmm. The invisible. Yeah. Those people that don't think that they can accomplish much mm. because they don't have much. Yeah. Don't think that. Yeah. You know, you, if you have a little bit. Little bit. Yeah. Just think about the mustard seed faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Small as that. Yeah. But you have faith the size of a mustard seed. God will use that mm -hmm. and turn that into something major. That's all he needs to work with. Yeah. Something small. That's all you need. Something small. Yeah. And he will turn it into something major. Yeah. Here's your big. Looking for something big. Start with something small. Give it to God. And then he'll turn it into something big. Yeah. And again, we come back to the two fish and five loaves of bread. He used that little boy's lunch to turn it into a banquet for thousands. Right. Right. You cannot despise our small beginnings. Mm -hmm. God is God will work. That's what he said. He he's working with that. Mm -hmm. He's working with the small beginning. Mm -hmm. But we can't despise. The small beginning. He rejoices. In he it. rejoices in the small beginning. He yeah. said, "Oh, look at my child. She's she's working. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work with her small beginning. Yeah, that little bit of money she got in the bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me show her how much I'm going to increase it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just don't hate on the little bit of money you got in the bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay, yeah. I only got what five dollars right now. But wait until the end of the year." Right. As I keep sowing mm -hmm. and doing what God tells me to do, yeah. wait until the end of the year and see what God, how God multiplies this money. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about some of the things we just said too small. You know, our TV is too small. <laughs> right. Think about it. TV too small. You, if you're going to buy a TV, you're going to get a big one. Some people are buying a 90 inch TV oh, and their gosh. wall is 85 inches. <laughs> A 90 inch TV by 85 inch wall. Why the wall can't hold right. it? Right. <laughs> but you know, we do want bigger and bigger, you know, bigger and bigger things. But you know, you were talking about hey, the bank account may be small. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember uh, a, a few years back when you were um, uh, starting to, you know, your health would you would turn your health around. And you would say, I only lost two pounds this week. And anybody who's been on the diet, you know how this feels, right? Absolutely. Because you you stopped eating, you've been consistent maybe with your workouts and you know, you with you know, watching what you're eating and, and those kind of things. And you go, I lost only two pounds this week. Especially at the beginning of the diet, because you want, you know. It's funny thing. It. It's a funny thing, <laughs> right? Because we know it took us years to put on the love handles yeah. and yeah. everything else, right? We know it, it took years for that, but but when we put on go on a diet for a week, you expect miraculous results. Yeah, these jeans still don't fit. <laughs> the one week, <laughs> right? But think about the two pounds, though, right? Because in order to lose 50 pounds, at some at some point, you're going to have to lose two. <laughs> you just don't jump to 50. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if we but if we despise that I only lost two pounds, what happens? You may feel like giving up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you don't despise that small beginning, Mm -hmm. you'll stay with it. 
and two pounds turns to four, and four turns to eight, eight to 16, and so forth. Next thing you know, you've reached your goal. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know how that feels, right? Yes, I do. Seems like it took me forever, but I know when I first lost those two pounds, it didn't seem like they were going, I only lost two pounds. Two pounds. Mm -hmm. Felt like I was, you know, didn't feel like I lost anything. Right. <laughs> and that's how you feel because you know you you tried, you tried, you tried, but you're right. It, you have to lose two first in order to lose more. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to go past two. You got to start somewhere. Right. You don't jump over two. You don't jump over five. I mean, right? It just doesn't work that way. Right. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it can be frustrating. You know, it can be frustrating whether it's a diet or, you know, whether it's a ministry or a business. You know, you, you're putting in your time. You're putting in your time. And it seems like, okay, this is not growing and this is not. And then, you know what we say when things don't, it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, you say it's not working. You know, this is not working as if God doesn't work in small things. But again, we see in Zechariah 4.10, God said, I, I I rejoice in the small beginning. Why? Because yeah. he's working in that. Yeah, that's what he said. working in it. Yeah, he's working. Sister Jenny says a couple of things. She says, first, she says, little becomes much when placed in the hands of the Lord, which is true. Mm -hmm. And that little could be something, you know, tangible like the boy's lunch. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, yeah. your aspirations, you know, which right now it's like, oh, Lord, I just want to get to here. And But, but God might take that and go higher, you know, yeah. do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. Or, you know, like we're saying that with two pounds, when you're trying to lose 50, Two pounds don't seem like much, but if you get discouraged at that small beginning, next thing you know, you back to eating bonbons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people do give up. They, they, you know, and yeah, it's obvious because you—that's why you die. Mm -hmm. You die again. You die again. Mm -hmm. You have a never-ending diet. You know what I think? Sometimes it makes. Sometimes we get frustrated with is when we are looking to make changes in ourselves. Mm. Maybe you're trying to become more disciplined and more, you know, with your prayer life or with your reading or you're trying to become more patient or more, whatever it is that you want to do because the Holy Spirit has been uh, leaning yeah. on you. You know what I mean? You want to move in a certain direction. Yeah. Sometimes progress is slow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we can get despondent over that yeah you know what i mean because mm -hmm. you're trying and yet maybe you're trying and you and you actually are doing things but people are still treating you the same way you go what's the use then mm -hmm. i might as well just keep being the way right. i was right right <laughs> you know what right. i mean you try yeah you're trying to have patience with people and people are not responding you're like okay yeah why bother yeah <laughs> right but maybe that's a small beginning too mm -hmm. you know what i mean or we see other people in our lives who you know maybe they need to make a change in their life stop running the street or stop doing this or stop doing that and they took a little small step but you look at it and go you ever be like that sometimes like you look at it, yeah you need that boy need to get himself together <laughs> But maybe he made a small change. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Oh, he needs <laughs> Yeah, he needs Jesus. But maybe that person, that loved one, that friend, that spouse, yeah. right, has has is on the road to it. You know what I'm saying? And it, it seemed like you know, you know what he said he was gonna change, but he's still the same old person. How do you know that? Maybe there's some yeast, things you can't see. Right, that's true. You know what I'm saying? That's working on the inside that's going to affect, you know, and you'll see the change. Right, so we are not to despise their small beginnings. Right. Right. God always has a way of turning things around. When he talks about us, <laughs> you know, working on us, you know, he, he, he encourages us 
But then he also has a way of us like trying to encourage other people yeah. in that sense. But yeah, okay, I'll, I want to encourage you, but you know what? Don't you do this to other people. That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. Because we can't despise other people's small beginnings. Oh, the man. Oh, the man. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. going back to Sister Penny, she is saying how a little is a lot in God's hand. And we see mm -hmm. that in so many ways. You know, the two fish and five loaves of bread, mm -hmm. the widow of Zarephath, mm -hmm. who had, you know, a little bit of oil and some flour. And she said, I'm going to make a cake. Me and my son are going to eat this and we're going to die. Mm -hmm. But yet that, because God was in it, right? that little bit was sustaining them. And could sustain them the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, the widow who, who owed the creditors. Right. What do you have in your house? I have nothing. But a little oh, bit yes. of oil. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a small start. But once God got into it, what happened? Pay her bills and right. lived right. off the rest. Right. So going back to you your five dollars, when you said the five dollars. <laughs> But if you use it the way God says, or you're obedient in a way that God's telling you, that maybe has nothing to do with the five dollars. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know, we don't connect the dots on our yeah, obedience no, we sometimes. Don't. We, don't. we think that if you need money, God's gonna tell you to do something in the area of money. Maybe he'll tell you to do something over here because he just wants you to be obedient. Right. Yes, yeah, it has nothing to do with what it is. And we wonder why God tell us it. Right. And sometimes it has nothing to do with it. But in his hands, the two fish and five yeah. loaves, mm -hmm. a little bit of oil and some flour, a little bit of oil in the house. What about David's five stones? Hmm. Big old Goliath. <laughs> yeah. All you have was five smooth stones and only used one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all he needed. Right. Because God was in that. So to Sister Penix's point, obviously when we have, when we have, if what we have is small, mm -hmm. but it's in God's hands, mm -hmm. then that small becomes more than enough. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It becomes more than enough. Yeah. That's why I think whatever we think is inadequate, put it in the Lord's hands. Even if it's you. Yeah. Because <laughs> we certainly are not equipped. Oh, we are. But sometimes we just even feel worse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we just feel that we're, Lord, there's nothing I can do right. 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 Always messing up. Well, put yourself in God's hands. Yeah. Okay, there's no better place to be. Yeah. You know what's one... um. If y'all okay, it's in, uh, if we can turn to First Kings 18. Hmm. If you remember when uh, Elijah, Elijah mm -hmm. that took on the prophets of Baal and he defeated them. Yeah. And then he, he went up to the, to the mountain. Um, he got up on the mountain and um, went to the top of uh, Mount Carmel and First Kings 18, verse 42, Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees and he was praying. And then he told his servant to go look toward the sea. Oh, yes. and, and the servant he went and he looked and he said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it says, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud, a little cloud. Mm -hmm out of the sea like a man's hand mm -hmm. and he said go up and say unto ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down the, that the rain stop thee not but all he said all that's in the sky is a cloud that's the size of a man's hand yeah. you know how tiny that must I be this <laughs> against the cloud against the sky you know how i don't even know how he saw he that he can't even see that that's impossible to see but that's how small Jesus. the cloud was. Yeah. 
Now we can look at that cloud. Now they're in the midst of a of a drought. Yeah. It hasn't rained in over three years. And they're in the midst of a drought. And now what what would we think if we're in the midst of a drought and we looked up in the sky and saw if we could see it? A cloud that was the size of a man's hand. We'll go, what's that going to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> <In the rain. laughs> what, what's, that? what's that little cloud going to do? We need some big. We need some big rain right. cloud to come rolling up in here. Right, we would never think of rain as that. Nope. But Elijah told him, "Go tell Ahab. He better get going, because the rain might stop him." But what what I love about this is. It says, it says, um, and it came to pass in the meanwhile. So meanwhile, right, while this little cloud is in the sky, meanwhile, mm -hmm. the heaven was black with clouds and wind. See, and, and clearly, you know, there's some versions that say the sky was just filled with black clouds. But it couldn't have been because the servant would have saw them. Right. He looked seven times and he said, I don't see nothing mm -hmm. except a little cloud the size of a man's hand. He didn't see no black clouds. Right. So this, when it says that in heaven, I'm thinking it was behind right. the cloud. It yeah. was behind right. the scenes see. in heaven where God is saying, yeah, you see a little cloud. But back here where I work, <laughs> come on, somebody. I got the clouds, I got the lightning, I got the thunder, and I got some rain about to break out. And it even says, right, that that there was a great rain. Jesus. See, that was behind the little cloud. But how many of us would see the little cloud and go, oh, man, God isn't doing anything. Lord, why aren't you helping me? You know it's raining. It hasn't rained. I mean, you know it's dry. Right. My grass needs some water. <laughs> You know what I mean? My crop. Right. That's how we would have been. And that's why it's very dangerous to look only on the surface at the size of a thing and think God's not in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we had to start complaining about the little things that. Mm. Because we do that a lot, you know, things taking forever, even the the diet, the weight loss, the, you know, things. It's the building of your business. The building of our business. And reading about this, the, the, the classes we take at night. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to earn our Right. We, right. Like, we think this is going to take forever. We want to give mm -hmm. up. You know, sometimes we drag our feet. Yeah. You know, because we think it's taking forever. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it. Just rejoice in the fact that you're doing it. Yeah. And rejoice in the fact that God is rejoicing with you. Amen. He's rejoicing in the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to make something of yourself. God Amen. is going to make something of you. You're going to get that degree that you're working on. Amen. Okay, it might take a while, but you're going to get there. Yeah. You I can't think about complain Brandy. about it. I think about Brandy. Right. Oh my Brandy God. took what ten years or more in order to finish out her studies to get her PhD and to, you know, her dissertation and everything. As a single mother. Right. And she was taking a class here, a class there, right. class here, wow. class there, over a period of years, one step in front of the other. And at some point it was a small beginning. Yes. It was a humble beginning. And you know, the finish line was way down the way road. Way down, way down. Right? But as you said, the Lord, as he said, he rejoices in the small beginnings. So he was rejoicing in every step she took. Yes. Right? And I'm sure rejoiced even the more as she crossed that finish line. Mm -hmm. And God does that with all of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And she persevered. Mm -hmm. and she made it. Mm-hmm. She's Dr. Brian now. That's Can't right. Take it from her. Oh man. Cannot. <laughs> Can't take it from her. Cannot. Mm -hmm. So those small beginnings 
and and maybe it seems like you know i know there are times when we were talking about the personal changes that sometimes we are looking to make because god is moving us in certain directions mm -hmm. and you know sometimes you may feel that you're taking one step forward and two steps back yes, yes. one step forward and two steps yes. back and you can get so frustrated with yourself mm -hmm. because you just want to make that steady progress but i've come to believe and i've experienced how god is is right there with you you know sometimes we don't realize that god i mean he's god right? and yet he's still our biggest cheerleader yeah yeah. He so much wants us to succeed. It's unreal. We don't we don't realize it. When we're ready to give up on ourselves, he's the one that's saying, no, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And usually it's because he releases his mercy. Okay, I messed up again. I missed it again. And man, that's when he like really covers you with mercy. And you can just feel it. Like he's like, it's okay. Come on, get back up. Let's Let's do it again. Yeah, whispering to you. Come on, you got this. You got this. Yeah. I'm going to help you. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he sends a little help your way. He might send somebody yeah. your way. Encourage you. Come on. What are you doing? Right. You know you, you, know you can do this. <laughs> right. You know? he'll, he'll do that. He'll do that for us. That's how God does it. He helps us. Yeah, but see, if we're not making the progress, we're not taking... <laughs> Remember we used to play the game I don't know what it was called, but I, I, I don't know if it's better like being like one, two, three, but whatever the one was called where it was like, you know, whoever was in charge could say to you, you can take three baby steps. May <laughs> I? Yes, you can. And then you take three baby steps. Sometimes I say, no, you may not. Yes. You can take six giant steps. May I? Yes, you can. And it's you take really giant steps. Like, oh, oh, oh. Right? And see, sometimes in our walk with God, all we want to do is take giant steps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We just want to be able to say, you know, I want to take six giant steps, may I? And all we want to hear God say, yes, you can, so that we can just, but sometimes God say, no, no you can't. No, you may not. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't realize if we take those giant steps, we're going to fall. <laughs> yes, yeah, so sometimes it could be. God knows you're not ready for those giant no. steps. You got to take small <laughs> steps. Baby steps. Baby step. <laughs> right. But God is with us in those small things. Yeah. And you, you use the word perseverance. If we persevere and don't complain, don't grumble at the slow progress mm -hmm. that we may be making, the small size of yeah. the, the, the project at the beginning, the small amount of, uh, of, of, of achievement that we seem to be experiencing, and just stay at it, oh, man. God's going to see us through the bigger thing. Because remember what the Lord says. He says, if you're faithful in, in, in the least, you'll be faithful in much. Yeah, much. If, you're, if, you're, if you're faithful, you know, over a few things, I'll make you a ruler over many. So he's looking at how are you handling the small, small stuff? Things, right. Right. If you can't handle the small things, God's not going to give you the bigger things. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Looking at that. Yeah. That's why he rejoices. He rejoices in what you're doing with mm -hmm. the small thing. Oh, yeah. She can handle that. Yeah. Maybe I can give her the bigger things now. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We, we, we have to. We have to learn how to embrace our small beginnings. Yeah. You know, yeah. If, we have, if we have a little house. Embrace your little house, your, your tiny. We had a tiny basement. Oh my apartment. god! Yeah, you. We well, you did. called what it was because it was a converted garage. It was a converted garage. A one car garage one, too. It was a one car converted garage apartment mm -hmm. that we in a basement. In, in a basement that we lived in with Brandy. Yeah. And we, yeah. hey, that was ours. Yeah. And we made it the best home that we Oh could. man, we remember we had hung them beads up. We hung, we hung up beads. Our little bedroom, <laughs> yeah. Our living room. Yeah, we hung up some beads. Our little, beads up. Had a little Parsons table. Remember the Parsons tables? Oh, yeah, look, they were $5.99. Yeah, you put them together. Then, yeah, that was our That was our furniture. We ate man. off them Parsons tables. Sure they, they, we ate off them. They were our lamp Amen. tables. They, Amen. They, they, oh, they were all purpose. 
<laughs> they sure were. But we did what we had to do. Hey, yeah. don't despise your small yes. beginnings. Yes. Don't despise your tiny yeah. apartment because mm-hmm. or your small starter home or whatever. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hey, because Amen. God is looking at how you do that. How you or do your business. business. Some, somebody, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard to run a business, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and to be successful. Most business startups fail, so mm-hmm. it's very very difficult. And so anyone who starts a business and you're able to make it past that year, because most small businesses fail within a year, and you're able to make it past that year, maybe you haven't grown like you envisioned when you started. Because sometimes we don't know how difficult it is until we start traveling in that road. Yeah. And then yeah. you realize it's hard to generate business. It's hard to get clients and to keep them and to deal with a fluctuating economy and everything else. It's it's hard. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, <laughs> trust me. That's first hand experience, yeah. right? It's tough. Yeah. And so maybe that first year or two wasn't the way you drew it up in your business plan. Because in your business plan, you had steady growth. Oh, yeah. Don't despise the small start of your business, right? Right? Because God can God, God is still working in the small things. Mm-hmm. That's what he's been telling us tonight. I work in the small, I work with the small, I work with the insignificant, I work with the things that other people despise that they think don't matter. So you stay with it. Right. You stay with it. Even with the, you know, the ministry, you know, it's hard for us sometimes. You know, yeah. we have a small ministry. Amen. But God speaks to us often because just because we have a small ministry does not mean that he's not using it. Yes. Amen. It does not mean that people's lives are not being touched. You know, thank the Lord. You know, because we still we are still able to reach people, Mm -hmm. to speak to people, to touch lives, to minister, to reach, to to share, to um, to give. We're still able to do that that. with our small ministry. God is able to use it. So I thank God for that Mm -hmm. as well. So don't despise wherever you are, wherever God has you, mm-hmm. because he can still use you wherever you are Amen. and whatever you have. And just be grateful for that because he mm. rejoices. Amen. He rejoices in that. The gratitude part is important because yes. again, yeah. if 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 we buy into the culture, the society that says bigger is better, then as we look at what we have and then look around at the Joneses and what they have, or we're being told what we should have at this point in our lives, and you say, I'm not there yet, then you can look at what you have and find it to be dissatisfactory. And next thing you know, you're despising it. And that's what God said. Don't despise. This may be your beginning. You could be on the on the front nine, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of us want to think we're on the back nine. You may be on the front nine. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you may just be starting. That's right. <laughs> I haven't had this for 10 years. Well, maybe it's a 30-year journey. That means right. you, you ain't even halfway to, <laughs> you ain't even halfway on your way yet. Right. Right. So you you don't know exactly where you may be on your journey. And it could be that you're at the beginning and don't despise it because if you despise it, you're going to find yourself and not be grateful when you're not grateful. You're going to start be like, man, this this old small thing, this old small house. This old small car, and now you're not taking care of it. And again, God looks to see what do you do with the small thing. Let me see. I make you ruler over much. I make you right. ruler over many. Right. right. That's what He's looking for. Right. So if we aren't appreciative, we could get to the point where we don't even take care of the small right. anymore. And you know what we've just done? Disqualified ourselves from the bigger. Exactly. Okay. Don't think you're gonna get anything else. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? I was reading um in Deuteronomy chapter seven, where God he said, even even with his own people, it says in verse seven of Deuteronomy seven, the Lord did not set his love upon you. He's talking to Israel, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. 
for you were the fewest of all people. Mm. So even when he chose Israel, it wasn't because they were some great nation. It was the exact opposite. <laughs> he chose them because, because they were the fewest of all people. And it says, but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep an oath, which he has sworn with your fathers, that the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Wow. So God said, he said with his people, Israel, I didn't choose you because you were the biggest nation. Big is not better. For me, right? I didn't choose you because of that. I actually chose you because you were the smallest. But look what he said, though. He said, but it's because I loved you. And because I would keep the promise that I made. Mm. And so as you maybe are dealing with a small beginning or a small thing or small resources mm -hmm. or small this, small mm -hmm. that, know that God's love may still be upon you. Yeah. The world again tries to say, if it's small, God ain't in there. The devil is alive. That's right. He was with his people, even though they were the smallest. And maybe you have the smallest of whatever it is that, you know, you, you know, in your circle of influence, oh, you got the smallest business of anybody. You got the smallest house of everybody in your family. You got the smallest business, the smallest that. So what? <laughs> if the Lord's love is upon you, his love never fails. Good. And God may just be choosing you because you got the smallest. Wasn't Davis the smallest of his brethren? Yes, he was. God chose him, this small little boy. Out of all his bigger brothers. <laughs> God said, I ain't choosing Eliab. No, he was nice and tall. God said, that ain't the one. That ain't the one. He took, what about God with, with, with Gideon? 32,000, too many. Yep. 10,000, too many. Too many. 300. Okay, now go fight. <laughs> right? right, right, that's it. So, so if we have small, we have little. We don't think we have enough, man. You might just be on to something right there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll know that this. I believe that every big thing is made up of. A small thing. little thing. That's it. And me, you know, because you know, I like to plan events and mm -hmm. things like that. I think the little things make a difference. Oh my gosh, they do. <laughs> I the agree little with things you. make a difference. Yeah. So I'll pay attention to the little things. Don't despise mm -hmm. the small things. Yeah. God does it. God does. And especially if you're the one who feels little and small, just know right. God is rejoicing because he knows, okay, I can use this person. Yeah, okay. exactly. Because they don't think they're too big. Remember that whole thing? You're too big for your britches. Remember we were told <laughs> yeah, that? Right. You're right. too big for your britches. Right. See, I, he, I even cut you down the side. <laughs> right. What is that? Right. Because you're too big. Mm hmm. And God don't want you, he don't use people who are too big, big for their britches. No. He's using them people who are something about being humble. humble. Glory to God. Amen. That's small. Small in God's sight. He sees small. He likes small. Yeah. That's why King is afraid. Took on the flesh of man. Amen. If he came in, in all his glory, People would have followed for the wrong reason. Right. Amen. Small beginnings are not to be despised. Nope. We should embrace them, cherish them, yeah. honor them, appreciate them, yep. be thankful yes. for them, right? Amen. Like you said, the thought of something is always small. Yeah, the big things. Yeah. And so you may be on to something big and don't even know it. If, if you know, and any of us, if we're not in the right place in, in terms of where, you know, what we view as inadequate or, or too small, it may just be the start of something big. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. 
We're going to get on up out of here. Amen. You look like you have more. Nope. I'm done. Amen. I am done. Oh, praise the Lord. So oh, praise God tonight. Why don't we pray together? Amen. Um, and just know, amen, that um, God, God is, uh, he's working. He's working. Amen. And you just started something. You know, somebody's writing a book. And they're like, you know, taking this too long. I've been writing this book for six months. I only got three chapters done. It's, it's, it's just the beginning. Just the beginning. Amen. Don't despise that, that, that beginning. Maybe it's a slow start. Right. It, amen. Just, just keep focused. You know God gave you that book to write. You just keep putting pen to paper. That's right. Amen. Keep writing. And it may take a little bit longer than you thought. You thought it was going to flow like a river, and it's not. It's okay. Don't despise the fact that it's like not, it's taking too long. Right. Amen. Right. Maybe the greater revelation is coming in a little while, and then next thing you know, you got. Amen. Sometimes it takes years to write. It it sure it does. Three years for me to write my book. Amen. <laughs> How long it takes to right. take. Right. Amen. <laughs> but we're going to, you know, we're going to make sure we just hang in there, remain faithful, remain humble in God. Amen. Amen. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. He will not despise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. Yes, and we Father. thank you, God, that you rejoice in the small beginnings, that you rejoice in using the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and, yes, the, and the base things of the world and the things that are despised to bring to naught the things that are. God, you are an expert at using small things, two fish, five loaves of bread, small uh, crews of oil, God, a small cloud the size of a man's yes, hand God. in the sky. You Jesus. are an expert at using the small yes. things, the small beginnings to confound the wise and to do great and mighty things yes. that if we're going to glory in anything, we're going to glory in the name of the Lord. And so, Father, we just thank you, God, as you remind us, God, that sometimes we feel small and we yes. feel insignificant as we go about our lives. But Father God, we are encouraged tonight to know, God, that in our smallness, glory to God, the great work of God is being done on the inside of us. And so, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. And we just thank you, God, for giving us encouragement and yes, inspiration to you. keep walking with you by faith and not by sight and to persevere through the tough times, to endure hardness as a good soldier that yes. we, God, may come through at the end, God, and cross that finish line which you have ordained for us before the foundation of the world. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are working all things together for good, that you are working in yes, our lives. Father. And Father God, that in the end, if we shall pers persevere, we shall see the great things of God come to pass in our lives. And we just thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that you will also help us to not despise the small beginnings in yes, others. Lord. Sometimes our Thank children Jesus. make small changes. Our spouse makes a small change. That loved one makes a small change. And we say, yes. that's not enough. Father, forgive us, for we know not what they do. Yes. Let us not despise the small changes that people are making in their lives, because behind that small change is the great move of God, ready to bring forth even a greater change and a greater blessing. And so, Father God, let us not be so quick to look at others and put our spiritual noses up in the air yes, and despise their small beginnings. But to know that just as you work with us in our small beginnings, you also work with others in theirs. And so, Father, we thank you for that perspective as well. So, Father, we just bless you and yes, we just Father. thank you, God. We ask you now to be with us as we come down from this place. Continue to bless us in our households, bless our families. And Father God, we're praying for those who don't know you, that Father, yes, that they Lord. will come into a Thank saving Jesus. knowledge of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ, that they may be brought into the family of the true and living God. And Father, those who do know you, Father, we pray that you will draw us all closer to you, that we can get to know you better. So, Father, we just give you praise and we give you thanks on tonight. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary and we bless the Lord. Yes. And we give you all praise. In Jesus', In Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Amen. So, uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Prayerfully, we will see you on Sunday uh, or whenever the Lord uh, determines. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Have a good night. Good night.